Hello, everyone. My name is Sergei Dmitriev. I'm a startup developer. I have 14 years of commercial development experience. And for the past seven years, I have specialized in developing multi-user web services primarily for startups. I am also a co-founder of three active startups. I created my own guide on web services development for my startup. Let's figure out the differences between startup development and general development. Startup development implies, first of all, that you are developing a project from scratch. That means before the development, there was no code, and you won't have to support any old or someone else's code. And, accordingly, you will need to define the rules and technologies by which the code will be written yourself. Developing a startup also gives you the opportunity to bring something new and your own into this world, which is perfect for dreamers and for people who have many interesting ideas. Also, the path of a startup developer implies that one day, when the project you're part of succeeds, you will earn profits beyond what a developer typically expects. At the same time, this entire course is essentially dedicated to development and programming using a specific technology stack. And by mastering this technology stack, you can develop not only startups. You can digitize businesses or get a regular job if you get tired of this path. Now, I will have to boast a little and prove to you that I am a good developer. Not because I want to brag, but to show the reason, which I might need to learn and why my tutorial might be useful to you. Initially, my first order, my startup development was next. I was tasked with creating a web service for conducting online courses. Students had to buy courses, take them, submit assignments, and certain curators needed the ability to review these assignments, among other things related to this flow, but roughly clear. Back then, I wasn't a very experienced developer, but I was given money, and I hired an experienced back-end developer and an experienced front-end developer. And there were three of us in such a team where I was the leader who, well, distributed tasks in development, and they kind of, well, led the actual development in their respective areas. And it took us a year and a half to implement this functionality. And everyone was very satisfied with us. However, now I realize that with my current technology stack and experience, I could develop the same features for the same project in just three, four months. From this, I understand that this experience can already be shared, especially over these seven years of my development. As a startup developer, I've tried many technologies and combinations selecting those that best suit our situation, starting from scratch, quickly, in a way that is easy to maintain, and most importantly, so that it brings joy and is pleasant to work with. In full-stack startup development, you need to cover many areas, know many technologies, and understand numerous problems to solve. And while you go through all these technologies and encounter all the problems, it will take a lot of time. So, I propose you simply use the technologies to solve the problems I will highlight. In this tutorial, we will cover all the most popular questions that arise in any web service. Authorization, deployment, logging, environment variables, form validation, back-end front-end interaction, and so on and so on. You can check this in our course syllabus. The most important thing is that you'll understand all these approaches and, in my opinion, the best personal approaches to solving them. At the same time, if you later realize that you don't like some technologies and would like to use others, you can always do so. But it's much easier to start with some predefined base. By developing literally a couple of startups, you will gain tremendous experience. And if suddenly you realize that you don't really like being a startup developer, or for some other reason want to get a job without preparing specifically, you'll manage it. Let me tell you an example from my life. Over seven years, a lot can happen, and indeed, a lot has happened. And there were moments when I stepped away from this path and decided to get a job. I got a job twice, and both times I passed from the first interview at the first company I contacted into the desired position with the desired income level. I rarely had interviews before, but at 19, I worked at a small company doing landing page layouts but we can disregard that. 
It turned out that this simple, practical experience I gained by creating just some projects was very relevant for a regular programming job. So at any time, if you want, you can simply get a job, at least as a mid-level, if you complete at least a couple of relatively serious projects. We'll cover how to create them in this tutorial. As mentioned earlier, I've defined myself as a relatively successful developer. To be fair, it's worth adding that, at this point, I'm not yet a successful startup founder. Yes, there are projects I participate in, some I founded, some I have shares in, and some already generate income, but it's not substantial yet. Nevertheless, over the years, I've developed a certain strategy I adhere to and believe in. I just want to share this strategy with you in words and propose that, if you're interested, you might follow it as well. The strategy is as follows. First, you need to create your own startup to gain experience and build confidence. Parallel to this, you also need to network and communicate with people. And most likely, you already have acquaintances who are goal-oriented and successful in some of their current business projects. These are the best clients, because often, being long in a certain field and knowing it well, they see genuinely useful ideas for this market and may approach you, recognizing you as a good developer and person who has already created a startup and ask you to implement this project for money. Your task is simply to develop startups for these people for money. The first order always comes in some mysterious way, and then they just start coming by word of mouth. It's important to understand that the implementation of each project regardless of your development speed, will take three months, six months, a year, or even a year and a half. Not because you are slow, but because you can develop projects endlessly, and there will always be new features. One day, someone will come to you offering money to develop a startup, and you'll actually like their idea. And this doesn't happen very often. Usually, yes, you might see the project as good, but maybe you don't trust this person or aren't fully convinced that their startup will succeed. But sometimes you'll learn to notice it when you genuinely believe in the person. And here you can offer to participate in its development, not for money, but for a share. Even better, offer him so that he pays you and gives a share too. You don't need a large share. If the project truly succeeds, asking for 10% is enough. And with 10%, you can negotiate for even some monetary compensation. That's it. You keep doing this cycle. Develop your own startups. Work for others for money. And work for a share in projects you believe in. This process in itself is very interesting and pleasant and quite profitable on its own. But someday, most likely if you keep walking this path, you'll find that one of your projects will take off, yielding huge profits. At the same time, startup developers often want their startup to take off, not to retire and sip cocktails by the sea, but to launch more startups. So it's really this path, this journey, where you simply enjoy creating. What you create resonates with your users, making you happy professionally. I'm in a similar situation now, working on a project I believe in and hope that soon some of them will start generating significant revenue. It might not happen this year, maybe next year, or later. Nevertheless, I'm happy doing what I do. And at the same time, I understand that if, for some reason, I lose this energy and enthusiasm or tire of such high responsibility, Nothing stops me from going and getting a regular job again, earning a regular developer's salary, which can be very high considering these skills that we acquire while creating products from scratch. So it's pleasant to go down this path, and if needed, turning back won't be that bad either. Thank you very much for your attention, and good luck.